Hello and welcome to the Revolver Fan First podcast. I'm your host, Christina Rowett, and joining us today is Pete from Chevelle. Woo! What's up? So first question we always do is the same, which is who was the first artist you put on a pedestal? We didn't have a lot of, we didn't have TVs when I was growing up. Really? Huge family of seven and um, we had record players. Yeah, so. Awesome. Neil Diamond, that was big time. That was one we'd throw on, you know. Yeah. Um, things like that. Cat Stevens, a lot of folk music. Um, that's actually why I started playing guitar was um, trying to learn Cat Stevens songs yeah, on cool. acoustic. Yeah, my, my, my family was kind of, um, you know, musically adept, I guess. My uncles and things like that were in bands before us. We didn't, we didn't even know that at the time, but, you yeah. know, my, my parents would put us in piano, you know, lear- learning how to do uh, piano lessons and things like that. But, you know, I mean, it wasn't really until, um, you know, it wasn't really until I heard music that affected me and I was a, a little bit older, you know, like yeah. 10, 11, 12, you know, that, that I uh, really stuck it to the guitar and yeah, like you put like, is there anyone you just went, whoa, what they're doing is amazing. Will I ever get to that? Hell yeah. Yeah. I, um, so I have older sisters and I would always hear music coming out of their rooms. It was all like, it was Prince, you know, it was Journey, it was like Def Leppard. And then it was Van Halen and Led Zeppelin and all that shit. So my, uh, my, my sisters would date these guys, they come over and they'd be like, oh, you play guitar. You ever heard of Jimi Hendrix? Uh, how about, you know, Led Zeppelin, you know, you don't want to listen to, I think I was listening to Huey Lewis on the news once and, and they were like, no, put this on. It was Led Zeppelin and it changed my world. But really Eddie Van Halen, you know, hearing Eruption as yeah. a kid, you know, I think that was 80, oh no, that was 78, wasn't it? Yeah. 1978, the first album came out. And then I'm learning, I'm trying to learn Eruption. I'm trying to learn, you know, uh, ain't talking about love, stuff like that. And that was so guitar, you know, heavy that uh, I have photos of my parents that my parents took of me and I'm just, I have a shredder guitar and it was all about, you know, tapping and all this. And it was great until grunge came around. And then I learned, oh, the guitar is a, it's, it's sort of a, a means to an end to get me to singing, which is really where my passion ended yeah. up in, in lives. When did, so how did this fit in with your brother? Because obviously they yeah, you man. are the core of the band. How mm-hmm. was he kind of having the same experience or was he getting into different stuff at the same time or? Yeah, Sam and I have always been in the same band together. We started yeah. it, it had, it had, you know, different names over the years when it, we were in our teens, but it was most, when it, you know, it became Chevelle, it was always he and I. Um, I had another brother that was in the band for a minute and then uh, he left, but it's always been Sam and I writing together. You talk to a lot of different band guys and they're like, oh, you know, you know, uh, they have a handful of, you know, five, 10 bands they've been in over the years. And I'm, every time I'm like, geez, this is like the only thing I've ever done as far as, you know, like the, that we've started and toured on and things like that. But um, yeah, Sam was uh, really into the punk scene, a lot of Black Flag, um, stuff like that, Minutemen and some post-punk stuff. Yeah, cool. Um, Firehose. Uh, that was a huge band. Got to meet Mike Watt backstage. Uh, actually, not backstage at the Metro. He came out to see us. That was oh. a cool thing. And yeah, it was, I, it, was, it was pretty impressionable. I was like, you know, 17 years old meeting a hero like that. Was that the first time you got starstruck? Um, probably one of those. Yeah, yeah, I think it was probably the first time, you know, because we were jamming and shit like that, but we weren't you know, we weren't like regulars yet, Yeah. you know, at the local venues and stuff, yeah. but um, you, you play anything you could, you know, but yeah. I, when I was around probably like 18, it started becoming regular. We played Double Door uh, in, in the city and Metro, stuff like that in Chicago. Awesome. What, yeah. um, what was the first musical storyline that you really connected with? As far as um, like, lyrically yeah. or yeah, like a story yeah like a lyrical story or you're like oh I really this this touches me um let's see you know um I can remember um hearing Soundgarden's Jesus Christ pose and how heavy that record was 
in the i mean at first you know you're, you're struck by that and it's on the radio too by the way because that's oh. when it that that was the heyday rock and roll on the radio oh man oh, and, and I, yeah and i mean yeah we still we still have radio i'm not i'm not saying it's it's gone um because right now i'm gonna get radio stations calling up and yeah. like texting <laughs> you know what the well, hell dude <laughs> but but that but, from what i hear back then it was well i mean it wasn't like rap wasn't on the radio the same way mm. no yeah i wonder i mean yeah that was what that was like in the 90s early yeah. early early 90s bad motor finger came out yeah. and every song on that album is great every song you know but um i loved how the rebelliousness of soundgarden you know it was like you know chris cornell is he he was such a legend i got to tour with audio slave in, in, in oh, Europe, did you? which was amazing but um yeah i mean you know i i grew up in a pretty religious household and um i had to sort of like i had to push back i mean that's what kids do right mm -hmm. so to me that song jesus christ pose like it was all about this hypocrisy. That's how I took it of this religious landscape that I was living in and that I was pulling myself out of and leaving the, the yeah. Catholic church, which is a whole other thing I want to get into. Yeah. But um, so that's, that's a band that stands out for Sam and I, like we yeah. really learned from Soundgarden and we, and we love them. To this and Chris day. wrote all the songs. Like Chris was such a huge like part of that, like so mm -hmm. instrumental in the songwriting. And, you know, it wasn't just, he wasn't just singing, he was doing that. And obviously you did that as well. I mean, yeah. I mean, what's it like? I guess there's less people to make decisions with when mm. you have like a club. <laughs> what, what are the best parts of having, I mean, obviously you have other members, but like you guys being the core of it, what's the best part about having that like center core and especially well, family? Oh, yeah. I mean, look, don't ever start a band with, you know, siblings. I mean, it's not going to end well. I, we've proven that. Um, Sam and I are an exception, though. Um, yeah. He's my older brother by two years. And for some reason, it just works with us. We keep going. We, ca we cared. We started together. So we're going to finish it together. Yeah. But um, I think that, um, I don't know, it, you know, lightning can strike. And I think that being a I'll say this about a band of three brothers. It did help put you on the map a little bit because, you know, same thing that happened with, if you're a band of three brothers like Hanson or whatever like that, it just got, you know what I mean? It got yeah. that attention right out of the gate. So that in that aspect, it does help, but yeah. then it, it will disintegrate and burn to the ground and somebody will be upset. Or, or it won't. Or it won't, You'll you know. Just keep going. What ninety five? Yeah. You've been. You guys have got some decent yeah. innings. Like that's crazy. You're having your thirtieth yeah. birthday in three years, dude. Is that not? Does yeah. that? Whoa. It, it's um. Yeah, it's bizarre. It's I. I don't even. Th I don't even think of it like that. Look. Yeah. I've started saying in interviews. Um. You know, like I'm just. I'm just happy to still be here doing it. You know, so many of my friends. You know, when we got. When we got sort of a break. I don't know if that's really a thing or not, but yeah. we started, you know, we got on Ozfest 2002 and that was where we really started to, to tour a lot. I mean, we did tours before with bands like Filter and, you know, Static X and Power Man 5000, things like that. But, um, you know, we got, um, we were on an indie label and then we went to a, a major and we got on Ozfest and it was like, next thing you know, you're watching your new heroes, which are, you know, um, you know, system of a down and, you know, uh, every night you get to see Marilyn Manson or, or every night you're, you're watching corn or whatever, which we're, we literally leave tomorrow night to go out with corn who are good friends of ours from over the years. So probably one of the bands we tour with the most. When did you first meet so, them? Did you meet them on that tour? Um, yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, probably. What, so, what do you think? So what do you think is the most significant, like as a fan of Korn, what do you think they did for music? Well, that first album was, um, I, I think I would say it was one of the most raw, heavy. I mean, the, the drop tunings yeah. changed my world. You know, I went out with bands like, like I was saying, Static X, Seven Dust, they were doing drop tuning. And I was like playing these regular chords and standard, like, 
I think I played D standard or whatever. And I go out with them and I'm learning how to do drop tunings and shit, but um, Korn took it to another level, you know, monkey and head, you know, they, their tunings were next level. And that first album, it almost like, I don't know if it was our shitty TVs at the time, but they it almost sounded like it would go in and out. And like the production value was so raw and palpable that you, uh, you almost, it almost sounded like it was broken on certain systems. And then you play it in your car and it would, it would thump and it would crush and, and you loved it because, you know, I come from, I had, I had my Pantera summer where that's all I listened to. And then, you know, corn comes out and it's like, fuck yes. Yeah. This is you my know, jam. I, this is my thing. Yeah. And, and I still love corn to this yeah. day. Like I, every time we play, you know, you know, somebody's running into our dressing room or vice versa. And they're just super, super nice dudes at that as well. Yeah. That's awesome. Did they teach you anything yeah. about the, the world at large? Yeah. I mean, I think it's really, um, yeah. I mean, really don't, don't care. I think really when you get up there, it's like, don't, you know, you know, um, I mean, look, they just crush. It's yeah. really what it is. And, and so you can't help, but if you're into heavy music at all, you recognize that. And then mm. you want that and you want that confidence. Yeah. So you kind of steal, steal that a little bit. I try to anyway. You guys are called a lot of different things. What do you, what kind of, what do you think you play in your soul? Well, I think um, we straddle the line on rock and metal. Yeah. You know, some of our, our later albums are a little more metal leaning. Um, mm. Lagergola is pretty heavy. In fact, I, I listened to, no, to the North Corridor um, like a year ago just to kind of revisit a song I was thinking about playing. And a lot of screaming on the later stuff. A lot of melo uh, melodic singing on the early stuff and a lot of later screaming. So, um, I mean, yeah. I don't yeah. know. Um, I, I try and put a lot of emotion into my vocals. I was going to say that. Uh, yeah, I would say that's one of your most defining characteristics, how much emotion is in there and how much range of emotion you've got in there as well. Like, I think that's, mm -hmm. it's badass. It's one of the greatest things about your band. That, cool. um, and did you find Thank that, you. did you find that early? Like, did you get, did you start singing because you were dealing with heartbreak or was it a way to express? I mean, it's interesting. Devin Townsend said to me once, like he, once he found music as in a way to express emotion, he started to lack the ability to express emotion in other ways. He kind of needed music to get it out. That was his new yeah. avenue. And that was, yeah. How about you? How does it, how does it work with you? Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think music saved my life. I really do. I think that I, I don't know what I would do without it. I had two things growing up. I had skateboarding, which is kind of a uh, anti-social sport, you know what I mean, in itself, you know, it's always been that way. Yeah. We got skateboarding banned from our town, from uptown. It was, what? yeah, we were, we were, you know, rail sliding on the benches and they, and then they were wooden. So they'd get splinters and people would complain and they'd sit down and they'd get it splinter in their ass. Yeah. I get that now. That's annoying. But, um, you know, grinding the curbs, whatever, just wrecking the place, you know, but we were kids, you know, yeah. I mean, it's, so I had skateboarding and I had music mm -hmm. and, um, music ultimately won out. It was, it's so emotional for me when I play and it's so exposed. Um, and I didn't, I didn't know at the, at the time, but, um, my, actually my mother, by putting us in piano lessons young, I would go and do these, uh, these like piano recitals. And you're like, you're like eight years old and you're getting up and you're playing your little piece. And I remember how terrifying that was and how that actually did kind of prepare me for giving me a little bit of boost of, of confidence to do what I did later, which was to perform my own music. And um, so I, I, I do, you know, I think that's a smart thing that they did. Um, I, I didn't, I mean, I don't think it was planned, but it was, uh, it was smart on their end. Yeah. Get a bit, get rid of a bit of the terror early on. Yeah. The, the, the oh, performance yeah. terror. Everyone has performance terror. Like that's the beginning of, of it all. Like the shaking yeah. hands and the whole thing. How did you get over it? Oh man. I think that, 
I think grip it and rip it. You know, yeah. I just think you just don't, you try yeah, not to think about it. <laughs> grip it and rip it is sick. That's a great way of putting it. Oh. Yeah. You know, in the beginning, it was like, you know, you, uh, you know, you just practice so much, which is so lame to say, but, you know, talk to Tom Morello about practice. Yeah. And he's like, I play eight hours a day, fucker. So, and that's his, his advice to, yeah. you know, to everyone. And um, I think if you can, uh, if you can just shove that down and sort of like get through a few shows, you're good, you know, yeah. but it, the, it is terrifying to be, you know, when, when COVID hit, we all took about two years off, you know, whatever, depending on where you sat with that and your career and all that. But um, it was while I was listening to interviews, podcasts of friends and they're like, yeah, I'm kind of nervous to get back there. I never take this much time off. <laughs> I fully understand that. You yes. Know? It's, I don't know if you feel like that, but it's a strange, it's been strange. I mean, if you told me that like music and dancing would be illegal, I would be, I'd say, take everything else. Just yeah. take everything else. I'm not okay yeah. with this. This is not, you yeah. know, and I mean, I've got friends who are like 19 and stuff and, and they're like, they miss the last two years of like their childhood and like, yeah. the world. it's like, well, it's, it's, it's never been easier to be older than, than yeah. super young. Yeah. Like we're like, well, we, we had a youth like yeah you know it's it's pretty mental yeah, yeah it's crazy it's crazy but did what was the first thing that made you write lyrics and stuff um yeah that's a good question i mean i haven't thought b- back that far in so long yeah. but um you know um i would say probably just sort of a um you know man i i am such a skeptic I'll just, I'll just say that. I mean, I'm, I'm probably too much of a pessimist for my own good. And, you yeah. know, the more you hang out with me, the more you, you'll want to go the other way. Oh. I've, I've tried to rein it in you yeah. know, myself in, you know, I'm 45. The darkness. The darkness. Yeah. yeah. But it's like, but it's also like when I go to write lyrics, it just comes out, you know what yeah. I mean? So, I mean, I just wrote a song about the Jim Jones you know, um, slaughter basically in the jungle, you know, so in the seventies. So, um, I, we put out a record last year Yeah. in the, in the strangest time ever, you know, and then we did three and a half weeks of a tour, a couple shows here and there. And then we came back and I'm like, all right, I, I guess I'll start writing again. Yay. And, and I, and I've written six songs and only one of them would I play for anyone. And it's this <laughs> song about, you know, this mass slaughter of Jim Jones, which is like my problem with religion and cults and things like that. So what is that saying about me? I don't know. I know this yeah. isn't therapy, but- um, Yeah, it kind of is. It, to make it's it like, way. yeah, I yeah. guess that. So if you want to do this every week, I'm Yeah, down. yeah, I'm, I'm, look, I'm down, man. I'm, I'm here to listen. <laughs> you know, I love a good story. Nice. You know, that's what I'm here for. Yeah, that's good. Well, I have to ask about religion because I, you know, you grew up. I, I know you said don't do go get into it, but it's 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 interesting, man. It's um, it's something that we're fed. I grew up in the Catholic Church, and we're fed quite young. I I went to a a church thing, and he started talking about capital punishment and abortion. And I was just like, I don't think that's cool. Like, I I don't think that's this is the forum for that. Like, I'm all you know. Look, the Ten Commandments are good. They're a sound mm-hmm. list. But mm-hmm. like, there's a sure, lot sure. wrong with the whole thing, you know, how, yeah. how did you, and how did you kind of reconcile making heavy music in that? Like, you know, I mean, you're on a Christian label right at the beginning. So, yeah. Well, yeah. And that was not supposed to be that way yeah. either. Um, we were, we were talking to many different labels and um, it, that, that subject came up and then we looked in this guy's background and we were like, oh, you're like, you know, an, an artist in that world, but we're not, we don't want anything to do with that world. Yeah. Um, and they're like, oh, don't worry. It's, you know, you're not going to. And then th- these interviews would come in. Sorry. And you, you do these, these, <laughs> these interviews were like tied to that world. And we literally called them up and after we did like five of them or whatever. And now they're out there forever. And, and, you know, th- I think the worst thing you, you can do is not be in charge of uh, your image and what you're you want to put out there yeah and we um we kind of we fucked up in the beginning because we were lied to and then 
we, we bought into it because we were so excited to just get things rolling. Totally, man. And we learned the hard way and it set us on a, a wrong, the bad, like a bad course. And then what you do is you try and take it back, which is what we did. And we ultimately did, but there was some damage done. Um, but it wasn't like, you know, look, I think that, um, it's a weird, I'm still figuring out how to speak about that part of my life because I was yeah. so, I was so upset over that Totally, because you, know, you get totally. your friends calling you. Uh, David Draymond called me from Disturb and he's like, why, why would you sign to a label like that, dude? It's like, and I was like, they said they weren't. And they said, don't just do what you do. And we're going to, you know, well, yeah. and um, it was a mistake. And what are you going to do? You yeah. move forward and we it did. Happens. Sorry, I don't mean to like yeah. revisit history that is unnecessary. Yeah, we-, we No, we, that's fine. I, I almost yeah. never talk about this. Yeah. Because, so, yeah. I mean, you know, you're getting something it's, exclusive. It's a thing, yeah. Well, yeah. It's, look, it's interesting like that, the personal and what you put out into the world is an interesting thing. And obviously there's, there's stigma around it and the stigma around mm. faith yeah. and having like how you- see the world which I think is kind of bullshit like I think it's very personal your relationship with what you think the, the mm -hmm. fundamental underpinnings are of the universe and yeah what we're meant to well, do yeah yeah and it's it's hard because I don't want to be offensive to people who have strong beliefs but at the same time the more I learn about who I am I want to speak out against it too so I I am like I I mean first and foremost you know, agnostic, but then also an atheist. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of upset at, you know what I mean? I have to like, these are one of those things I need therapy for actually. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, you grow up in a certain way yeah. and then you, you have to think for yourself, right? And what happens is you may battle the, your, the closest people in your life, which are your, your family or your friends or whatever. Yeah. And that is exactly what happened to me. So I pissed off a bunch of people and, um, you know, started my band on the wrong foot and then tried to take it all back and feel like I, I have done a lot of that, you mm. know? Oh yeah. Uh, but it was like, you know, what are you going to do? You have to move forward. You have to, you know, and, and I'm in my forties and I have moved forward for these years and all these years it's been 10, 10 full length albums. Yeah. And, um, that's ultimately, wild. so ultimately, yeah, yeah. Bringing this all the way back around, like, mm music did save my life because um it gave me purpose it really did because yeah. i wasn't finding it elsewhere i wasn't good enough to be a pro skater i wasn't interested in too many things i didn't want to do construction the rest of my life i had no, I had no passion for you know yeah. pounding nails you know so which is what i did before yeah. which gave me the drive as well to pursue music and and the arts finding purpose is a big deal and I think that, and I think that's what I kind of love about this show because everyone who's come on it has found their purpose and is living it to whatever level that they are. But it's mm -hmm. like, you're doing the thing that you feel like you're meant to do. And that's, that's a pretty big gift. It's everything. It, yeah. I mean, it's, it, it, if it's not everything, it's most of it's everything, most of isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, what else can you want? And, and having that emotional outlet. And, you know, as we said, it is extremely emotional music it's gotten people through actually on that note like the top played songs on your spotify right it's right. insane dude there's like a hundred million listens like it's mental there's like a billion listens in your top five songs it's pretty i was like people really like these songs you know yeah isn't that bizarre because it's, it's some of our oldest stuff yeah it's from like 2002 or 2003 when the album dropped we toured on that on those songs for like a year before we dropped the album. Oh, so when that's... that album came out, so we did two Ozfest, yeah, um, you know, tours. So each each tour was two months long. So we did four months of Ozfest before <laughs> that album dropped. And when 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 Wonder What's Next dropped in two thousand three, it was outselling every single band combined on that tour. That's Everybody. Incredible which is crazy to say, but that's, it was a different time. It was like, mm. so it was selling 20, 30, 40,000 records a week. And it was just by luck that we had dropped the album and the, the other bands, you know, they were huge, way bigger than, you know, us. Yeah. 
but they didn't release an album maybe around that time. So it was just one of those things and get the stats. Yeah. It's what's crazy. It is mental, but I, you know, and then you go on and then you're like, okay, okay. We just dropped how do like a new re- record Neurotius last year. Like, how do you get those songs into like the, into pen- the limelight? Yeah. yeah. How do you, in this day and age, because you're like, well, I, I want to play this new stuff. I'll play the old stuff too. But if all they're pumping is the old, then it's a, it's a weird thing. You're like, you have these questions. Which yeah. Well, okay. So we've done a thing a few times. We actually did it with Brandon from Incubus, which is like, go through those five songs. And can you tell us something we'd be surprised about, about each of them? And whether it's the stuff you were listening to at the time, but just mm-hmm. something people don't know. So the red, what's something we'd mm-hmm. be surprised about with that tune? Oh man. So the red was a song that uh, the management I had at the time said, um, you know, don't forget about radio because he was a big radio promoter. And so I went back to the drawing board I wrote the red and I brought it to management. I was excited. Check it out. He goes, I don't like this song. I don't want it on the album. Don't worry about it. Don't, you know, Uh, and so we go to vancouver and we work with garth richardson who just did (gasps) yeah um, yeah yeah, he did like the first rage album he did he's um, pretty badass dude yeah dev is living with him yeah yeah for ages oh yeah seven townsend record yeah 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 so um we wanted to do somebody we wanted a heavy album you know and uh which we ultimately got but um he, he was like, I was like, yeah. He was like, what about this song over here, The Red? And he, I was like, yeah, well, maybe we'll skip it. And he goes, we're not fucking skipping that. And I was like, fine, all right, go against management. Yeah, let's do it. It was more like, it was a way to like, yeah, you know, take it back. So we did it and it turned out to be um, our most well-known song, which ridiculous, you know, is just a song about my brother uh, wrecking his own shit when he got upset. I mean, Sam literally de- would destroy something he loved. I mean, w- we were all teenagers. We were all going through that. And that's where that song came from. Just a bit of Pete Townsend, like get into it and just embrace it. Oh, yeah. Destroying. Like, your who. Yeah, yeah. Find your inner, yeah. you know, get it. Okay. What about Send the Pain Below? Yeah. Send the Pain Below. That song was not finished when I went into the studio because that was the same album. And, yeah. Uh, the producer Garth was like, Hey, um, this bridge sucks and you need to fix it. And it was panic time. Cause I was like, I'm only here for a short amount of time. And what do I do? So I went up into a studio room and I sat and I, and I literally wrote the bridge, which came out to be a little bit heavier. And, and he was right in that aspect because it went, it took the song down originally. Yeah. In fact, I think people would probably be surprised to hear the demo version of that. Yeah. Um, I should put that out there. You should totally do that. It's so interesting to hear like the workings and the process and like the birthing process and, you know, how the baby changed in the womb, how it grew horns and, you know. Yeah. I think I would like that too. Like, I would love to hear the demos from, you know. Yeah. You know. Alice in Chains, you know. Yeah. What did Man in a Box sound like or whatever? I don't know if they released that, but yeah, something. Well, yeah. people have followed you pretty hard, dude. You know? Yeah. Like they, you know, you've 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 got some runs on the board, you know, t- 10 albums. Like people have stuck around. Like it's pretty nuts. When yeah, you- I, I, yeah. I am grateful. I am grateful for our fans. We have some diehards that are um at every show and uh super cool people too. I mean yeah. I, I'm thankful for that. Yes. Was Ozfest the beginning of that? Um, we we did a tour with Filter in '99, I want to say, or 2000, and I think yeah. that was really the beginning that I noticed people coming out, and they were like, into it. You know, yeah, that was really. I think that was the beginning. But yeah, Ozfest was next level. I mean, yeah. it was like, you know, you get up at you know 8:30 a.m. and you'd play at 9:30 a.m. if you were the first band on the second stage and then the next day you'd play at 10 and 10 30 and it would go like that and that was um that was for the for the young then that that was a long ass day a lot of crazy shit a lot of crazy fans what's crazy. the nutsest thing you saw there who was who was the most out there individual on that tour oh man sharon 
Sharon, Sharon forever. Sharon, I want to meet Sharon so bad. She's, you know, there'd yeah. be no, there'd be no Black Sabbath continuing with Ozzy without, like, without Sharon. Like she got him off the floor. I'm just saying. Oh yeah. Respect. Yeah. The second time we went to do Ozfest was oh three, I think, and he started the tour at his house. So we all we all showed up at his, all the singers on the main stage showed up. And I walked into uh, Ozzy's TV room and he was watching the news <laughs> and he was, he gets up and he's this, you know, legend and he's come he comes over and he's like, Hey, what's up guys. Thanks for coming. Do you need anything to drink? You know, he's like offering us whatever. And Manson's in there. And um, I think it was, I think it was Jonathan Davis was there and some other people. And, uh, and we're hanging out talking and we go out and there's their whole kitchen is flooded with uh, re- like, you know, rock reporters just full. And I sit down and I'm like, I cut myself shaving <laughs> that, that morning. I don't know what the hell I was shaving for. I was, I didn't know what, I, everything was new. Yeah. And um, proceeded to get, you know, just completely annihilated by uh, just beat up verbally by Marilyn Manson next to me. He's talking about, he's going to literally, I mean, this is not good. This is not good. What I'm going to say, okay. He's, he was he's talking not about, good. Let, he, let's be honest. He's now, he's not good. Yes. Yeah. He, yes. You know, he was talking, I'm, I, I'm not kidding you. He was like, he, he was joking about shoving a mic up my ass to break my cherry for opening the main stage on Ozfest. And I'm sitting here looking at him like, I want to tell him fuck off, but can I do that? You know, like I'm here with Ozzy and Is all it, these yeah. people, you know, and I'm, can I swear? You know, it's like, yeah, I was so green, yeah. but I was, I mean, it was happy, but I was like, shit, you know? And um, yeah, so yeah, fuck that. That's memorable. Like, That's memorable. Well, it's, do you think you, like new metal cops a lot of shit for like it being a dark era for heavy metal and, you know, like a lot of people give the 2000s era of metal a lot of heat do you think that's yeah, accurate yeah. i feel like it, there was a lot of good stuff going on yeah, yeah i think so yeah i mean it look i mean corn and deftones and hmm. you know it, you know if you're into rock metal or heavy music in, at all like how can you deny how good the deftones are dude i feel like i slept on the deftones i feel like i slept on the deftones in my youth and i'm now having a renaissance and i just feel so stupid that i didn't get harder into the deftones as a kid that hey well that's not all bad because you have something you can it's pretty fresh it's it's yeah i'm I'm a fool and it's good to it's good to advance like it's good to yeah but you know we get we get that a lot we're like people are like you're not what are you are you new metal are you like you you came out in the in the knots, you know, the two thousands, you know, but you you would tour with these bands, but then these bands as well, and you're like, yeah, we toured with whatever. So it's pretty interesting getting to straddle so many different worlds. Yeah. What is um okay? One more song in that in that top list, face to the floor. Yeah. Yeah. So face to the floor is uh, uh it's pretty much a rock track. I mean, it's not it's not that heavy. It's you yeah. know, it's just kind of a groove. And that's one that my our buddy Joe Barisi, the producer, he was like, "Hey, just get back to a, to the riffs, right? Yeah. Write me a like write a good riff." So that's where that song came from. But you know, I was writing the lyrics, and it was all around the time that you know, I don't know, I I don't know how many people dig into our the songs that aren't singles, but I try and pick topics that aren't typical. They're not talking about breakups, you know. They're not talking about, um, you know, uh, all angst anymore. You know, it's like all, it's like, or, or my, my teenage angst, you know, it's like, you, I'll pick a topic just because it's different. Like and space travel. Some, yeah. So yeah. that's interesting to me. I mean, I'm, I'm following Elon Musk and, you know, uh, I'm following the James Webb telescope, you know, that's, that got launched, you know, space travel does get more interesting when you, as if you really like science, you know? Yeah. And um, so face to the floor, it, it's, it's a topic about Bernie Madoff, the guy who, who ran the biggest Ponzi scheme of all time. And I was fascinated. Yeah, I was up late watching 60 Minutes or whatever it was. And I thought, I'm going to just 
jot some lyrics down. And that's where the, those lyrics came from. That's so, um, yeah, I, I try to not start every song with you, me, I. I, I try and use different you know, to make it a little more interesting. I get a lot of people saying, you, you need to rhyme more. And I'm like, okay, that's, you know, <laughs> you whatever. Rhyme more. You need to rhyme more. Who says that like, to a singer? Who says you need to, that's absurd. But, uh, but The wrong producer for you. Yeah, that's, you know? that's messed like, up. Bye. Well, okay. You said you've written six songs, but you're only going to show us one. I don't believe you. I think you're going to like work them and stuff. I, I mean, that's, yeah. who am I to question you? Um, but what kind of stuff are you getting into now because it's a, it's a weird ass time dude world war three yeah. pandemic plagues floods like it's getting pretty biblical like it's getting Nuts. mad biblical so w- what are the some of the things that you've been getting deep on in these last few years yeah um so uh i've been really in getting back into like um outdoors activities because i think the, the less I'm outside, the more insane I am. And yeah. that's not good for uh, like where we are now. Like I live in Chicago land, it's cold right now. And I, you can only, you know, unless you're doing like outdoor sports, like snowboarding or whatever, I, I don't really do that anymore. Do you still skate? But, um, oh yeah. 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 Sick. Um, I, uh, I've transitioned more, more to like longboard, you know, like, um, you know, cause I just, I just cruise, you know, yeah. now, but, um, but yeah, I mean, every once in a while, I'll grab my, uh, you know, my little, little skateboard and, and do some uh, kick flips or pressure flips. And, you know, uh, anytime I see it, a half pipe, I want to get on it. Yeah. I mean, I, I, never goes I'm away. Actually, I have a seven year old boy and he's like, I'm, I'm literally last year he got it. He wanted to get on a skateboard and I was like holding his hands and I'm like, this is happening. This is full circle. This is amazing. So I'm thinking about building a, a just a mini half, like <laughs> two and a half feet tall. Skaters and, yeah. never lose it, man. Skaters never lose it. Like, you know, even if you're not, even if you're not acting it, like you, you still see that thing and look at it in a different way than regular people. Yeah. Yeah. You know, skating, you know, when you talk about being a fan first, like yeah, skateboarding was so big for me. I got to meet Nadas Kapis at a skate shop, you know, big fan of his. He was super cool. This, he's a, this great artist now. Um, I was a fan of Mark Gonzalez in the 90s. And, uh, and of course, all the Bones Brigade, all that stuff. But I mean, I was so into H Street, all this stuff. Any skater that hears this will, will know what I'm talking about. But yeah. I, I'm a diehard forever. It's like guitars and skateboards. And yeah, yeah, that's where I it's lived. True. Well, you look at like, I think um, Nate from Converge still has a, like goes to the skate park every day and gets into it, like goes hard. Mm-hmm. And I, I think it's cute. I think it's cute. That sounds, that sounds, sounds, <laughs> I think it's awesome. <laughs> I think it's awesome to like have, well, I think that physical activity thing is really necessary because you can go down a rabbit hole and never come back out if you um, stay inside too yeah. long. There is, yeah. and you know, there's this great line Joe Dispenza says, which is in age of information, ignorance is a choice. And a lot of people are making that choice. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people are just choosing that or just digesting yeah. stuff that is just ignorant. A lot of it. Yeah. It's easy yeah. to, you know, how do you discern what's worth listening to kind of thing? Yeah. Agreed. I, I know it's a tough question because to answer. Yeah. yeah. Because especially when you have friends that span the whole, you know, thing and you know it's what like, I mean? Like, who, what do you think about, you know, vaccines over here you know what do you think about politics you know it's like or, or whatever we already talked about yeah like, yeah so it's like yeah. like it, it's almost like if you if you want friends you have to just not talk about certain things or if you can be cool enough to just be like oh all right oh, interesting i have You'll friends, have friends. Like yeah I have but friends like that, can't. we just don't talk about it. And I'm just like, yeah. if we're going to have a friendship, we're just not going to go there because I feel a certain way and you feel a different way. And we're never going to convince each other of the our perspective. And it's yeah. just like, yeah. Just, um, and I mean, I think the bottom line is capitalism doesn't work. Like capitalist <laughs> democracy just doesn't work. Like we're living in a broken system. Like yeah. there's not much, like it's just broken and we don't know yeah, how to yeah. fix it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then you add social media there you know, on top of it. And then yeah. what are you left with? You're, you're left with everybody throws their opinion around and yet it's really like, who's, who's really qualified to do that. Yeah. And then you're talking to your neighbor, 
So, I mean, it's, it's a tough place to end up, you know? And then if you, if you have a platform, yeah, you know, how, how deep do you go on your opinion? You know, because. Yeah. Well, like, how, how are you, are you pondering that? Because this is the time. This has been the most like hot button time for all yeah. of this stuff. Like, do you, how do you decide how you come out on that? Especially knowing even in your yeah. own personal world, the spectrum of opinions, like, do you not want to alienate people or is there like a line you have to walk? Yeah, I, I think there is. And I, I don't, I don't like it. I want to be transparent. You know what I mean? We, I, if you want to be, everybody wants to be that, that Tom Morello, that Howard Stern, that, that, that's just like, you know, a barrage of just them. Okay. This yeah. is me, you know, and I'm, I don't care. Don't follow me, but not everybody can pull that off because you deal with so much hate, so much anger. And he does and gotta, a lot. Yeah. Morello yeah. does cop a lot. Like he, like, it was very, um, yeah. like, like I grew up with Ray Jansen machine and I didn't really yeah. get how divisive he is yeah, with yeah. a lot of people who don't agree with his perspectives on things yeah. that he isn't silent about. Like, you know, Tom Morello is, he's, he's, uh, he, somebody I met, you know, uh, in Europe and we got, well, I met, he, he grew up in Libertyville, which is the town next to me. Yeah. Right. That's so we, we hang out at the same bars when he comes back, you know, awesome. but he since moved his mom out to uh, where he lives in California. <laughs> so every time we're on a show with him, he, comes into our dressing room or vice versa and we and we talk about Libertyville and how you know um because it's basically we're from the same area but um yeah he told me the last time I talked to him he was like you know he's like you don't want you don't want to do what I do he's like I I I got death threats you know you know I can't you know talk about yeah I worry about my kids things like that and I'm like oh shit that is real like yeah, it changes dude. when you have kids mm. you know everything changes right I've, I've one little boy and yeah, it's hard to tour now. Everything changes. Yeah. So, um, it, it, it's, you know, it changed things for the better, you know, but, um, in his, you know, stance, I mean, shit, death threats. Yeah. It's, it's no, thank you. It's wild. Like it's just, people are so adamant that you agree with them. Mm -hmm. You know, like they're just so adamant about it and it's just, mm -hmm. we don't have to agree. Yeah. yeah, I'm friends with the dudes in Rise Against, and they they are they're very vocal too. Yeah, and nice guys, and strong awesome. willed, strong strong people. Yeah, you know they they are an awesome band. Hmm. And um, so yeah, you see your friends do it, and you're like, well, what do I what do I want to project today? And I end yeah. up, I don't, I don't know. It's like um, you do certain things, and then you just see how how you deal with it. But um. I don't know. Ultimately, my brother and I have always said we, we try to just keep it about the music, and and our mm -hmm. heroes did that as well. A lot of them did, you know. Totally. Um, so we're not we're not as you know vocal as some mm -hmm. other bands, but it's like it's it's you got to find where you're comfortable with social media. Yeah, and totally. And your strength is so much your emotional timbre that you don't necessarily need to go down that path. Like it's it's kind of. It's more visceral than that, I guess. I mm -hmm. think, and, and emotional stuff is a bit more universal. It's not, um, you know, mm -hmm. we all feel stuff. Right. We can't, we can't help it. It's just, it's in our nature. What are you gonna do? Okay, five songs that change your life. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Um. Let's see. Um. Oh man, I would say. I dropped this on people just violently, just out of nowhere. Yeah. I mean, so many things are coming. Yeah. Um, okay. Fugazi's um, Waiting Room. Awesome. Um, Led Zeppelin, um, Black Dog. Let's see. Um, I already said Soundgarden. Um, yeah. Let's see. Um, you know, um, Jesus Christ Pose. Uh, let's see what else. You know, um, let me think here. Do you get a lot of people doing this? And they're like, yeah, no, no, hundred percent. Yeah, of... it's cruel of me, really. I feel like I should, I should let you know this is coming up later, and I never do. But it's, I, yeah, it's real. It's if you, if it, yeah. you don't, so yeah. it's I mean... cruel. I'm a monster. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, like, let's see what else. I'm, tr I'm going in other genres. Like, I love, like, I love '80s music too. Like Depeche Mode. Yeah, you know, totally. Tears for Fears. Depeche 
Depeche okay, Mode so- forever. Like that live yeah. album. I Yeah, we listened to it on a camping trip for like two days and now I can never listen to it again. But that dude yeah. had tunes. Yeah. You know? So we covered uh, we covered It's No Good years ago. I love that. Ultra is because- such a good record. Yeah. It's so good. And yeah. so that song hit me. I love it. We covered it. It's a it's a really bad cover. I'm not saying it's great, but <laughs> if we were to do it now, I would have spent more time. I didn't realize it was going to go on a yeah. like B sides thing, <laughs> you know, because we just like did it like in our home studio. Yeah. Awesome. But it, it's real. It has emotion and, and all that. Yeah, is what you want. But um, totally, man. So I think that's four. That yeah, four. You got one more, oh, man. One more. Yeah. Think. 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 Um. I'd like to do something uh, like current. That would be yeah. cool, wouldn't it? From from the modern era, from the from the now times. Yeah. Yeah. You know, okay, I'll I'll give you one that's really current. Yeah. Okay. And I'm a fan of this band. They're not. They have like I think they came out around around 2012 or I, I'm gonna screw that up. I won't even say. Eh. Um, but um, I was singing this morning. I was humming to myself. Trouble's coming. Uh, royal blood trouble's coming yeah and uh it's like this super like upbeat disco-y kind of rock music and i heard it and it stuck with me yeah but their but their first two albums are a little bit heavier and a little bit more dark and um still awesome band two two yeah. dudes up there i'll be disco okay like, have you heard of an australian band called paper kites uh i don't think so okay you need to mess with them like they're they're okay. upbeat they're super emotional they're i guess you call them indie rock but um just really like vocals are just off the chain and yeah they're just a really great band that's just okay. my hot that's yeah. my hot tip for today i don't usually voice it on people but i just feel like you i just have this feeling you might like paper kites yeah, and do just it. rapping rapping australia as well okay another one that is going to put you on the spot your musical mount rushmore there's four faces carved in the stone as i've said a number of times i want to one day just take over some sort of rock place and just put mm-hmm. all these rock heads on and people can tour it like a pilgrimage i feel like dolly parton could probably afford it i just want to get dolly parton on board to just create this i mean it's a it's a left field shot that she'd be into this but so I, I'm giving you sp- time to think. By the way, that's what this ridiculous story is. Ah, I yeah. See. You see what I did there? Yeah, I went so, off on so, a whole weird tangent. I like that. Yeah. So my my heroes on Mount Rushmore. Yeah, that's what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. The big old um, kids. Yeah, I mean, um, and they don't all have to be rock or metal. No, dude, they're just, they're just faces. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, look. You know, um, you'd want you want some ha- some handsome some you know people up there, right? You know, like, <laughs> but in their heyday, right? Because like we all get old. No, we're doing right? heyday for sure. Like we're definitely doing heyday. It's not like we're gonna do like fat Elvis if it was Elvis. <laughs> like, not. I mean, sorry, Elvis, but like, right? We're probably gonna do early Elvis if we're gonna carve him up. Like, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, because I was thinking, you know, the early Johnny Cash. I mean, his face would work. Yeah, and with the, it'd have to have this coming out of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I wasn't big into, you know, country music, but he was, you know, legend. Still was, you know. He's a cult figure. Absolutely. Yeah. So he's got to be one. Um, Yeah, let's see. Um, Man, let's see. Um, How about I give you a a, a left field? Okay. Go on. Okay, Sinead O'Connor. I love strong vocalists. I, we covered a Sinead O'Connor song early on as well. And um, I think that her bald head up there in her heyday, she was gorgeous, talented, awesome. So so I, I that's my, my vocal. I read that. She, and she was provocative. Like she did not care at all. She was yeah. just out there doing it. Like, yeah. no holds barred, which is good. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah. Um, oh man, how about the, the singer for ministry? He, he looks insane and I yes. love him. With all the face so, with the piercings in his face. Yes. Yeah, he's actually been on the show, Al Jorgensen. Like, it, oh, no it, way. He has actually, he was one of the first episodes. So he, um, yeah. oh God, I wish I could remember what his were. Um, but he is a character, man. He is a diehard music freak. 
Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. He's, he's from Chicagoland too. And um, I, I love ministry and he, he is, he has not stopped and it's intense. He's relentless. The fact that he's still alive yeah. based on um, the um, Absolutely. level of uh, like he lived with Timothy Leary for two years and just, they just no experimented psychedelic things on him. Like most, I people, that. Would be dead. most people would be dead. Yeah. By now. And no. I know, uh, I know uh, a, a bass player that did tour with, with them for a while. Um, Tony from static X yeah. who we've toured with. And he told me some stories about Al only like two years ago. Right before <laughs> And the shit he was telling me that happened in the in the dressing room is hilarious. But I, I'm not, I'm going to spare no. you. Yeah, yeah. It's, there's a lot of Amazing. fecal matter. The world that we the world yeah rock and roll at this t- point in time, looking back over the last few decades, it's a pretty interesting time to be in a band for rock and roll. Like be a heavy band. I mean, I guess yeah. this is just the era of of. I don't know whether you call it the year of heavy music, but you've, you've been a part of an interesting time, you know, yeah. like, and played a role. Like, that's cool. It's good to be a part of things. I'm just rambling, yeah. but you know, it's, yeah. No, I, I'm, I am grateful yeah. usually. And, you know, I know we covered that, but um, I, I'm just happy to still be here. Yeah. You know, it's as just long as we can take it. Thing. Yeah. You got R- one. Ride the wave. One more. Okay. Ah. Uh, I don't like this one so far. Sinead, Johnny Cash. Yeah. Al, Al, that's pretty, that's solid, dude. Okay. This might be my favorite. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. So in there, it's pulling in the big guns. We got some country. We got some a little bit of pop. We got some, some ministry. You mix Oh, it. man. Yeah. Let's see here. Um, you know, um, All right, let's do let's do something like uh, let's do Tom York. Let's go with that. Radiohead is their living legends, and I, I had a conversation with my brother about this the other day because we were talking about okay, so do we keep playing the red? Okay, we brought it up. We, yeah, we brought it before we talked about it. It's, yeah, you know it's old now, but um, I found out that they rarely played their biggest song, "Creep," which is yeah. the number one song on Spotify's list by right huge. On. Yeah, yeah, and I fucking love that as as an artist i'm like yeah. they just say i we don't we don't care this yeah. is what Sorry. we do come to the show or not yeah and tom york is a, is a genius yeah. so he needs to be up there yeah for sure like they um yeah like doing they did some albums that really did change the course of things i think or at least change mm-hmm. the course for them like mm-hmm. weird ones like kid a is a weird ass album and it's such mm-hmm. a weird left turn that um yeah where would you like to go that you haven't gone yet before well we've gotten to tour around the world quite a bit but yeah we've we haven't been able to get to some countries that um what about musically oh musically yeah sorry yes okay no i'm down don't go to russia this is a really bad time (laughs) yeah yeah Yeah, we've we have not been to russia um um never been to japan yet we were supposed to go and that's that's kind of it's kind of a, we need to, I need to experience that. I want to see to, that. Yeah. You go to Japan, come to Australia, like we're yeah. neighbors. Like that's just logical. Like you guys, yeah. we really, we, miss we did rock and roll. I'm sorry. We, we really miss you guys. Like it's been two years. Yeah. You know? We, we did a tour in Australia and it's been, yeah. it, it was, it was wild. I mean, it was, we did a lot of shows, which is, awesome. you know, but um, we need to get back there too. But um, yeah. So musically, I, you know, on the latest album, Neuradius, I started doing a lot of keyboard, you know, getting back to my piano roots. Yeah. I'm, I'm horrible. I, I suck. I never kept up with it. But, you know, I know where middle C is and yep. I just, I just try and feel it. So I got a keyboard and I, I run a bunch of different effects and I, you know, and I created these soundscape little interludes for the album. And I, I guess I'd like to experiment more of that. I, I'd like to do a little more um, industrial style music. And, That'd be really interesting. And whether or not it works for Chevelle, hmm. you know, whatever. I just, you know, it's something I'd, I'd like to do. It's interesting music. Like I, I'm definitely a fan of industrial. Like it's, it's um, mm-hmm. well, just like it coming from the sounds around you. 
sort of mm-hmm. thing like the the you know from these people coming from these like industrial towns and going i want to put them it's a yeah me. well it's not you know i mean i uh, it's it not your thing, a, but yeah. it's a guitar driven band. It's always yeah, done sorry, that. And, and so, but so literally, but if I feel like I'm a songwriter, so yeah, like, you know, whatever instrument I, I have, I will try and create something on it. Yeah. But it's, it, yeah. Don't ever go away from guitars. Guitars are important. Yeah. Stick, and I stick to those. I agree. I yeah, agree. Stick because to those. Don't change is, that. You know. <laughs> yeah. Let's not plant ideas in your head and you're just like, yeah, hey, and it's like, no. Yeah. I, I mean, I can't, I can't stop playing guitar. I mean, it's, yeah. it's in Forever. me. Forever. So, yeah. What was the first song, song you learned to play guitar on? Um, let's see. Um, it, well, it was acoustic. Um, I, I can tell you, it's not the first song I learned. Um, I, I believe it was a Cat Stevens song that was the first that I learned, but um, the first song I, I learned to impress a girl <laughs> was more than words. <laughs> da, 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 da. That was terrible. Um, yes, yeah. that, that's a yeah. classic. Yeah. yeah, but you know, you're like 12 years old and you're like, ah. That's hella cute, yeah. I mean, it's it's just, a, it's, it's terrible, but. Yeah, it it's, it's still great and you know, it's it's good. It's been really interesting to go deep into your world. It's always mm. fun and it's good to know what some, some of the things that went into you, um, you know, thanks. Pete. Yeah. Like, oh, hey. so new music, new music. What's up? When, when can we expect it? It'll be faster than the last gap, right? Like, yeah, it will. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. Yeah. Um, we're, you know, we have this month long tour with corn and code orange and <gasps> then, um, orange. yeah, that's going to be it's, it's fucking heavy. So that's a cool yeah. lineup. That is a cool yeah. lineup, you three. That's huge. It's such a good, you're kind of touching all the edges. Yeah. Between you Yeah, three. so it's going to be fun. And then we're going to come back and keep writing. So yeah. hopefully, um, I mean, hopefully spring of 23. Yes. So next year, which will be way quicker than the last one. Totally. It was over like five, six yeah. years between the last, yeah. This Fucking month. COVID. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah it's been a And time. it got us good. Look, yeah. I'm glad everyone's back. And that's, that's. Totally. And, you know, yeah. So thank you for joining us. It's a Revolver Fan First podcast. Pete from Chevelle's Right Music is on tour with Corn. It's, it's, it's on. 